whereas it is provided by Section 63 1E of the Public Finance Management Act, Cap 15.01, that the Minister for Finance may, by resolution of Parliament, borrow money from a bank or other financial institution for capital expenditure of the government. And whereas it is further provided by Section 64 of the Public Finance Management Act, Cap 15. Point zero one, that money borrowed by the government must be paid into or form part of the consolidated fund. And whereas the Minister for Finance considered it necessary to borrow an amount of 11,500 special joint rights in this resolution referred to as the credit, the loan from the International Developers Association to finance the organization of Eastern Caribbean states skills and innovation project and whereas the maximum commitment charge rate payable is one half of one percent per annum on the on withdrawn balance and whereas a service charge is payable at a rate of three-fourths of one percent per annum on the withdrawn credit balance and whereas the principal amount of the credit is repayable on the first day of April and the first day of October in each year. And whereas the principal amount of the credit is repayable over a period of 40 years with a grace period of 10 years. Be it resolved that Parliament authorizes the Minister of Finance to an, an, an amount of 11,500,000 special joint rights in this resolution referred to as the credit, the loan from the International Development Association to finance the organization of Eastern Caribbean State Skills and Innovation Project. Be it further resolved that the maximum commitment charge rate is one half of 1% per annum on the unwithdrawn balance. A service charge is payable at a rate of three fourths of 1% per annum on the withdrawn credit balance. Principal amount of the credit is repayable on the first day of April and the first day of October in each year. The principal amount of the credit is repayable over a period of 40 years with a grace period of 10 years. Mr. Speaker, as the resolution read, it's actually a loan to finance the OECS Skills Innovation Project, Mr. Speaker. The 11, and it's a loan for 11.5 million SDRs, which is equivalent to a 15 million US dollars. And it's from the International Association for the OECS Skills and, and Innovation Project. And you, as you note, Mr. Speaker, the interest rates, and you know, Mr. Speaker, what's happening in interest rates worldwide these days, and you note that the interest rate for this loan is the maximum commitment charge rate payable is one half of 1% per annum on the unwithdrawn balance and three fourths of 1% per annum on the withdrawn credit balance. And Mr. Speaker, this loan is to improve the skills of people. We are borrowing money to improve the skills of people, keeping it in theme with what the government stands for, putting people first. So this money will be used, Mr. Speaker, to deal with the unemployment situation among young people in two OECS states, Grenada and St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you'll be pleased to note that when at the end of this year, this fiscal year, when the unemployment figures will be given, you will find that there has been a tremendous dent in the unemployment rate among young people in St. Lucia. And the facts, Mr. Speaker, will speak for themselves, Mr. Speaker. The facts will speak for themselves. There's St. Lucia, I don't want, you see, Mr. Speaker, I am not uh, many revelations and many truths will be revealed very soon. Very soon, Mr. Speaker. The, the truth, the truth of the state of the solution economy. As 
demonstrated by economic metrics. Not innuendo, economic metrics, facts that can be proven both quantitatively and qualitatively in the lives of the people of St. Lucia. These are going to be revealed very shortly. But, but that, that loan, Mr. Speaker, is basically to improve the skills of young people in this country. Mr. Speaker, as you know, Mr. Speaker, some time ago, I, I, I was addressing some people in London, Mr. Speaker, and I made a point, and I'll make it again, because it, it is a belief that if you make something sound stupid, even though it's not stupid, the person who said it would believe it's stupid. But that doesn't work on me, Mr. Speaker. I'm focused. And that's my problem. My problem is I'm focused. So if you say, and you write, and you in the end do, and say what I say is stupid, once I know it's not stupid, I'll say it again. And I'll say, I'll say what I said again. I said, Mr. Speaker, that COVID made me understand more deeply I said that COVID, the COVID pandemic made me understand more deeply the impact of the tourism industry on the lives of the people of St. Lucia. That's what I said. I, and I, I'll say it again, Mr. Speaker. So they went along and they said, I say, I didn't know what tourism means. Mr. Speaker, you know, that's noise. I don't, Mr. Speaker, their problem with me is I'm focused. So noise doesn't bother me. Mr. Speaker, we found that after COVID, a large section of the workforce who had been employed in tourism, Mr. Speaker, found themselves out of job. They were employed at all levels of the hotel, of the hotel industry, Mr. Speaker. Because you see, Mr. Speaker, the hotel industry, what makes it work is if there is vertical integration. Vertical integration means that people are involved at all levels of the industry. So what we strive to do is stop it from halt the horizontal development and try to make it vertical, Mr. Speaker. And to be vertical you, means you must have skills. You have, don't have only to be a, 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 a restauranter or a waiter or, house, or housekeeper. You need to have skills. You need to have skills in IT. You need to have skills in... in, 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 in in the culinary arts. You don't have the skills, Mr. Speaker. So we found, Mr. Speaker, that a number of people who were employed in the tourism industry, both Mr. Lucia and Grenada, because these two countries, the impact was, was, was even stronger, Mr. Speaker, that we found that these people had to be reskilled and these people had to learn different skills so they can, be, they can get ready for the market, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, hoping that that economic shock that COVID caused to the industry. And in St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, we are particularly affected because in St. Lucia, we borrowed over $300 million for COVID, Mr. Speaker, because we had absolutely no savings. The, the government had no savings. So we had to borrow money, borrow money to pay salaries. And it's a, very, it's a good thing, Mr. Speaker, that our civil servants remained employed during that period albeit the fact that we had to borrow money to pay them, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, we are gradually coming out of these, of that, of these ages, Mr. Speaker. And the government, Mr. Speaker, will be able, will be able to pay its civil servants and pay its debt, Mr. Speaker. But that's for another show, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, we found that the youth unemployment rates were exceptionally high, Mr. Speaker. In St. Lucia, at that time, it was said that between 37 and 45 percent of the young people in St. Lucia were unemployed during that period. And what, and what, what happened, Mr. Speaker? These young people were displaced and they could not find employment because they didn't have the necessary skills to be able to work in other parts of the industry, Mr. Speaker. So, our productivity fell, Mr. Speaker, and there were skill shortages. So the impact of that loan is to upgrade the skills of these young people, Mr. Speaker. That hopefully would be the impact of the loan, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, what are 
the components of that loan, Mr. Speaker. Number one, Mr. Speaker, first of all, Mr. Speaker, this, this loan, Mr. Speaker, it's hope, hopefully the, the productivity of the region will increase. And in the long run, its growth and the negative impact of skill shortages will be reduced because these young people are going to be reskilled, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the mismatches that exist between the high youth unemployment and the mismatch and the skills mismatches. Because you find when some young people go and look for a job, you ask them what they don't want to do, they say anything. There is no job as anything. There is no job called anything. But it's because of the mismatch, Mr. Speaker, the a young person and the availability of jobs to match their skills, Mr. Speaker. That is why they say they, they can do anything, Mr. Speaker. But there's another story, Mr. Speaker, which, which, which will be told and which was criticized and written about and, and, and all kinds of, 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 of slander and, 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 and all kinds of things, Mr. Speaker, was said, Mr. Speaker. But that story is a, is a story that will be told short, Mr. Speaker. It's the story of the youth economy concept of solution, Mr. Speaker. The yay concept. When that story will be told, Mr. Speaker, that story will be told. So regardless of all the, the, the kind, the, the, the papi showing and things, Mr. Speaker, remain in focus. That story is going to be told, Mr. Speaker. Remain in focus. So, Mr. Speaker, this increasing is also called, Mr. Speaker, increased investment in research, development, and innovation, Mr. Speaker. What, what that means is that there'll be an increased investment in technology, te technological adaptations. So that means that young people will be able to use the modern, use the new economy because of the training that they will undergo, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there are a number of young people who work from their homes. A number of people, they create a point from their homes using the, the, the technology available, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, it's very important. And you know, it shows the government's plan, Mr. Speaker. We never said, ki gain lani in computers, Mr. Speaker. What we did, what we did, Mr. Speaker, is we started the one computer, one laptop per child per school in St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, because we knew, we knew that in spite, again, of all the slang and the calumny, that we knew that if you give, there is nothing in this world that's perfect, Mr. Speaker. You can find downsides in everything in this world. There is never a perfect solution. Anything you do, Mr. Speaker, there'll be some level of downside. Must be. But we, we, we knew that in the main, if you gave every child access to a computer together with, a, with smart classrooms and together with teaching children how to use these machines, Mr. Speaker, you will have the increase in technological knowledge and increase in skills. And that's why the Ministry of Education must be commended for their work as it, as it relates to the technology in schools, Mr. Speaker, which is going to expand in the coming budget. Mr. Speaker, we also found that there was a lack of qualified employees, Mr. Speaker. And again, this is how the government's program is coming together. A lack of qualified employees. So we said we would have had, we would have strived to have one university graduate per household. One person who is qualified at a higher level per household, Mr. Speaker. So you can, you can deal with this mismatch of skills. So you don't have you do not have to, all the time, you have to see that you have to bring somebody from, uh, from overseas because St. Lucia is not qualified. St. Lucia is not qualified, means overseas. So we started the one university graduate per household. I mean, Mr. Speaker, and to make it even again, Mr. Speaker, you see how, how the government program works. What we did is we worked with a university to give full time scholarships to households where there no one in the family was privileged to go to university. We called it first generation scholarships, Mr. Speaker. First generation scholarships. So households, Mr. Speaker. And you know, he who feels it most knows it, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. He who feels it most knows it. I was fortunate to have gone to, uh, to have gone to get higher education, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. 
but there are many people, Mr. Speaker, who were, who are, or who were, well, I want to use a word brighter than me, Mr. Speaker, but they could not go. And this is why I am in government. I'm in government not to gloat and to victimize people and to be envious of people and to say things about people, Mr. Speaker. I'm in government to see that the people who went to school with me, who didn't have the, who didn't have the opportunity to get a higher education, I and this cabinet and I will make it possible for them, Mr. Speaker. And that's why I'm in government. And that is why I'm in government. I'm not in government for myself. I'm not in government for my ego. I'm not in government to believe I'm better than anybody else. I'm in government to work with a group of men and women to improve the quality of life of the people of St. Lucia. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the objectives of, of this project are to enhance and advance the technical skills, strengthen regional collaboration in post-secondary education, and foster collaborative innovation, and in the case in the crisis of crisis and emergency, respond promptly and effectively to it, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the project comprises of four components. One, fostering regional co collaboration for skills and innovation in the post-secondary space, 4.8 million years. Mr. Speaker, component one will support, <coughs> component one will support the development of an overarching <coughs> of an overarching regional strategic framework for post-secondary education and of mechanisms to enhance collaboration among OECS member states on post-secondary education. The improvement of post-secondary data at the regional level and the development of a regional innovation ecosystem with strong participation of post-secondary institutions. Component two, strengthening post-secondary institutions and co collaborative in innovation, US 27 million, 1.07 million unguaranteed commercial financing. Component, component two will provide direct support to national colleges, direct support to national colleges and other selected post-secondary institutions in participating countries to implement regional enhancement plans support innovation projects and develop new or enhance existing programs for priority skills with the objective of promoting improved learning environments and fostering better skills and innovation in the, in the OECS in response to increasing private sector demand. Meaning, Mr. Speaker, that we are going to make an investment at the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College. Because we believe in our regional institutions, Mr. Speaker. We believe in our regional institutions, Mr. Speaker. And that is why in this budget, you will find that we are going to be assisting and paying the debts that were left behind for us from the University of the West Indies, Mr. Speaker. Because we do not believe, we believe that there are fantastic organizations and learning institutions in Canada. We believe that. But we also believe that there are fantastic and low institutions in the region, in St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. So we believe that we ought also to concentrate on the regional institutions. And that is why we are going to be helping University of West Indies, and that's why we are going to be enhancing the Apple with Community College, Mr. Yes. Speaker. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, component three, project management and technical assistance. The US 4.2 million. Component three will provide technical assistance to support the implementation of project activities and finance the establishment and functioning of free PIUs, free project management technical institutions, Mr. Speaker. Compon component four, contingent emergency response com component that is called CERC, which is due to the OECS high vulnerability to natural disasters, including these caused by climate change and its vulnerability to, to global shocks as exposed by the COVID-19 crisis, a CRC is included in the project. The component to facilitate the use of critical resources by the event of an eligible national emergency, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the primary, the primary beneficiaries of that project will be 40,000 young people, ranging from ages, 
18 to 44 who are currently enrolled or will enroll in post-secondary institution in the OECS region and who will benefit from regional interventions to foster collaboration in post-secondary education space and new tools to access priority skills and support teachers as well as 120 entrepreneurs and firms that will participate in the innovation project, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, this loan will lie in the offices it will be worked to in the Ministry of Education, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the loan is concessional. 40 years, Mr. Speaker, with a grace period of 10 years. There is a commitment charge of one half of 1% on the on with John, one half of 1%, and service charge is three fourths of 1%, Mr. Speaker, on the on with John balance, Mr. Speaker. And the loan, uh, Mr. Speaker, again, the loan will be repaid semi annually at US 150, 150 thousand US dollars paid over 20 periods commencing on the April the 1st 2034 and including October the 1st 2043 and US 300,000 dollars over the remaining 40 periods commencing April the 1st 2044 and including October the 1st 2063 Mr. Speaker this loan we ask cabinet, my cabinet colleagues, my parliamentary colleagues, to support Mr. Speaker, because it's a loan about people, Mr. Speaker. It's a loan about people. Mr. Speaker, this government could have been reckless, could have been reckless, and get involved in direct finance contracts, and leave this country every year having to pay $61 million of DFCs every year, Mr. Speaker. This government could do that. We could do it. We could do to appease some people and to be short-sighted and to be able to organize things so that things are organized. We could do that, Mr. Speaker, we could do that. But, Mr. Speaker, this government believes we have trust in the people of St. Lucia. When we say that the people of St. Lucia are resilient, we are criticized, Mr. Speaker. But resilience means that the people understand the facts and the realities, and the people are ready to work for themselves with the government to improve the quality of life of the people of St. Lucia. And that's what resilience means, Mr. Speaker. And our history is a history of resilience. We fought to free ourselves from slavery. We fought to free ourselves from colonialism, Mr. Speaker. We fought to do all that because we are resilient people and we are proud of our resilience. It's our resilience that has put us where we are and it's our, it's our resilience that has caused the people of St. Lucia to make that change on the 26th of July, 2020. What? It's because of, of, of our resilience, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, we could have gone along and borrowed and gone involved in DFCs and caused the DFCs four years to repay, five years to repay, and cause interest rates at that time of between five and seven percent. And go ahead and do it. We could have gone ahead. But, Mr. Speaker, this year, and going to next year, Mr. Speaker, I want to assure the people of St. Lucia that we will present to the people of St. Lucia a plan, a method to improve the road infrastructure in this country. We understand, we understand that the road infrastructure in this country has for many years been a state of, in, in a state that it, in, it could have been in a better state. Many years, Mr. Speaker. Bad roads in this country didn't start in 2020, 2021, Mr. Speaker. Didn't start at that time. We understand. We know that. We're not gloating about the, 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 the state of conditions of the road. We understand that, Mr. We know that. But we also know, Mr. Speaker, and again, these are facts 
that we hate to repeat, we also, Mr. Speaker, that there has been unusual rainfall in this country for the last couple of weeks. Unusual rainfall, Mr. Speaker. That's a fact. That's a fact. We're not saying that's the reason, but it's a fact, Mr. Speaker. And we understand and we apologize to the people of St. Lucia that they are suffering through some discomfort in the roads of this country, Mr. Speaker. We understand that. We also say to them, Mr. Speaker, that bad roads in this country is a fact that nobody likes. I don't know why some people would believe that the Minister of Infrastructure would like to know that there are bad roads in this country. Why would he like to do that? Why would he like that? You think we get up in the morning and say, it's good, get up your bad roads? No. But Mr. Speaker, we are responsible. This cabinet is responsible. We are not going to burden. I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something. If this government was reckless, the state of the economy that we found and, the way, and where we've brought it, and where we brought it is going to be proven by economic metrics, facts. That's where, we, that's where we brought it, Mr. Speaker. Facts. You understand? And Mr. Speaker, we could have gone and had DFCs and have, and have DFCs. We could have had DFCs. We have the ability to do to do, have DFCs. But Mr. Speaker, our, respon the res our responsible nature of the government will tell you that we understand the inconvenience. We are trying our best to assist in the, in, to, to limit the inconvenience, Mr. Speaker, but we are going to, in the coming period, Mr. Speaker, we're going to make an impact on the bad roads in the country, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I thank you, and I urge my colleagues to support this resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.